Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, today we're going to start this uh, series of filters. We're going to just show some uh, simple, quick examples to begin with. Big old resistor, how do you like that? Kind of skinny that way, huh? It's kind of cool resistors. And a capacitor. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with talking about a high-pass filter. And I just want to say, uh, it's an RC filter, so two parts you can make it this uh, filter with a uh, capacitor and resistor so think about a voltage divider you put voltage across the top of these two parts across these and then you tap off say the resistor on the bottom for this high pass okay so a high pass so think of a capacitor and two parts of its curve okay one part is when it's say a short high frequencies or when it's open, low frequencies. So low frequencies, if this capacitor is on top and we're taking the output off the resistor, not very many volts are getting to the resistor, okay? But at high frequencies, this guy would look like a short. Then all the voltages across the resistor. So that's why it's a high pass. High frequencies, it passes them all or you know, good part of them, okay? Ideally, it'd pass them all. But anyway, just to show you these because they're large parts. We got some smaller parts here we're gonna actually use. Um, but yeah, let's come over here, look at the circuit, and then we'll look at what it looks like on the scope, all right? All right, let's do it. For this example, um, we have this circuit here. It's a RC high pass. So the reason how you can how you can tell that it is a high pass is the V in is here, comes in these terminals, and the V out's here. Well, if you imagine this is just a voltage divider, two parts dividing this input voltage, and what is left over on the resistor is what we're going to take. So we're just dividing the voltage. Now, because the capacitor is on the top part of this voltage divider, as the frequencies get really high, then this becomes essentially a short. So look at a capacitor in two ways. One is when it's open circuit, low frequencies. When it's open circuit, there's really no voltage here. All the voltage is dropped across the capacitor. When it's high frequencies, then it's a short. So then very little voltage is dropped across the capacitor and most of it's across the resistor. So you end up with a curve like this. As, as the frequencies get real high, then whatever your volts, if, you, if your gain is volts out divided by volts in, if your output voltage is the same as your input voltage, it's a gain of one. It's, it's zero dBs. So that's this line here. High frequencies, that's what you get. Low frequencies, it goes down to zero because it's all dropped across here. Okay, let's just go up to the equations here real quick. Part of that voltage divider is X of C and R. So X of C is that equation, one or two pi FC. So what we want to know is when those two things equal each other. When the voltage here is equal, that's our, that's what we call our half power. That's our 3 dB point. So X of C is going to be equal to R at that point. So X to C is going to be equal to R, which means R is going to be equal to this 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi FC. So then we can go over here and, and we get this kind of identity. We multiply both sides by C and we get RC is equal to 1 over 2 pi F. So that's our RC time constant. Okay, but really what we wanted was F. So what we want to do is we want to Multiply both sides of this equation by F, so we get FR equals 1 over 2 pi C. And then we want to divide both sides by R, so we end up with this. F equals 1 over 2 pi RC. Then if we do the math on this, given these values up here, that's almost 400 hertz. So that's our cutoff frequency. We can see F to C. Okay. So if we go back and look at our graph here, that, that's this point right here, F of C. 
and we're, we're going to just say it's almost 400 hertz. So 400 hertz, we can draw this little point, and then after that, it's just a straight line. Pretty much all the voltages is on the uh, resistor, and below that point is 20 dBs per decade. So uh, at 40 hertz, it'd be down minus 20 dBs. And then at four, it'd be down another minus 20 dB. So that's our 20 dBs per decade. And then at the FC point, we could say, well, really that's minus three dB point down. So we plot a point and then smooth out that curve like that. So that's, that's our high pass filter. We're passing all the high frequencies, all the voltage at high frequencies. And at low frequencies, we're not passing them. They're being dropped across the capacitor. So of course, if you wanted to design this at a certain frequency and you had one or the other of these guys in mind what value you wanted it, maybe 600 ohms here, then you could put 600 ohms and calculate the C for uh, the particular frequency you're interested in. Okay, let's go look on the scope and see what, what this looks like on the scope. Okay, now this is a setup for the high pass filter. We, it's essentially a voltage divider. We have a capacitor and a resistor in series. The generator and the input power is applied across here and monitored across here with the scope probe. But now in the center, the voltage tap in the center becomes our output and it's across the resistor. So high frequencies, that capacitor will look like it's short. We'll get all the voltage right here. Okay, so for the filter uh, plots, I have my voltage probes coming in here. They're both set in the times 10 position. And when I set them up, I just look, make sure they're 10x. I can hit each button, make sure it's 10x back and forth. And then I also check to make sure everything else, AC, inverts off, one mega ohm, that's always there. Um, yeah, so I just really just check this guy and this guy and kind of go back between the two and I can check them both. They're, they look both good. I don't need to set up the time base or the trigger because for these plots this application does that. So I come over to the frequency response analyzer and select that and then say yes, confirm. And then I'm back to this window. Now I'm ready to go. Now the setup, I think I should still probably be good. See the reference circuit in this case is what I'm going to be doing. I have a filter, device under test. The output will be, you know, in this case the voltage divider, the center of the voltage divider, and the input will be the generator. So coming into the input. So output divided by input gain. And I think that looks good. The setup, I think we're going to be doing. Okay, so for this case, um, the output will be channel 2 and input channel 1. So output divided by input. Generator 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz, 2 volts uh, max. That's max, so it'll do. And then the load impedance. So I could set up all these guys, but I've already done that amplitude and then you know I'm going to be in high Z oh look high Z lets me go to 4 volts but low lets me go to 2 so I just I put it in 2 because it's going to be low impedance out here so I'm just ready to run it now ready okay so I think we're ready to start the scan and let's I'm going to hit the button right below right here where my finger is Got the lights off, I think it makes the display better. So, okay, we're scanning. And we're basically starting, this uh, FRA analysis on this scope starts at 20 hertz. The red is the phase and the blue is the gain. Okay, and we swept uh, up to 10 kilohertz and it's just stopped now. So now if we look at the curve 
and we're expecting around 400 Hertz to so these uh, lines here you see 100 down here the next grid is two three four hundred hertz so right around in here we're seeing uh, the crossover so it's flat across here and about minus 3d points down it's it's pretty close 400 hertz now for the phase it should be around 45 uh, should start around 90 which this is showing 87 here let's see if we can get the scales a little bit easier to read. Uh, we're at 15 per uh, grid, so I'm going to change this to 42, so it puts us right on a. I mean, I mean, it's at 42 now. I'm going to change it to 45, so that we'll get a zero on our scale there. All right, so now we have a zero down here. Okay, I think I'll do the same thing up here. Up here, I got five dBs per per grid, and I'm at minus 12 so let's make that minus 15 and that'll give us a zero on that scale as well okay there we go all right so the phase uh, ends up at zero and started at uh, pretty close to 90 and right around 400 hertz should be about 45 degrees so I could bring up these measurement cursors Bring cursor number two f the f way over here. Well, here, let's find. I'm kind of in between. I'm looking at the frequency down here, and I'm at between 370 and 460. Uh, I could take more, you know, it's just resolution. It takes longer to scan if I get more points, but, you know, that's pretty close, I think. Uh, it's showing we're between 36 and 41 and it didn't really start at 90 so that's pretty close but that's what you should expect is about 45 degrees at your crossover and the gain is about minus 3.7 is where I have it here now it doesn't when you see the line up here if I come up here at the top it doesn't really get all the way to zero pretty close though about 0 0.8 so it's just about 1 dB down so it doesn't quite get to zero capacitor still has a little bit of resistance in it even at the high frequencies so there we go all right hope that helped kind of demonstrate that okay guys so on this uh, filter uh, using a low ohm resistor like 20 ohms as we did in this uh, example what that does is it kind of shows the imperfections of the capacitor it shows uh, they stand out more if we would have used a higher ohm resistor and a different RC combination it would have looked more ideal the curve okay so um, this is just first example just quick one hope that kind of you know helped um, you understand the high pass and it's just the first example of this one. Hope you liked it. Thumbs up if you did. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.